ridge was 300 feet uh, and the tip stuck above the ridge and uh, that would give you a, a size of a football field and uh, as it proceeded from the uh, down from the sky it was a pure white with of course the flashing red and yellow and blue lights and then it turned to a fluorescent orange the whole ship did and it stays this color and of course it'll glow the whole area up right around where the cow was the area was uh, uh, deep red and, and that's where you could hear that cow bell there seems to be no good explanation for uh, why these uh, events occur uh, the ranchers are puzzled and bothered and yet they uh, are not satisfied with what they hear from veterinarians or from uh, public officials about predators animal predators being the explanation What's up, a Cinema Shogun here, and with all of this talk about UFOs lately, and the fact that we have whistleblowers, high-ranking intelligence officials from our government coming out, claiming that aliens are real, and that our government has a secret operation where they go and retrieve landed and crashed spacecraft extraterrestrial spacecraft and beans. I think all of this talk and this openness from our government talking about these UFOs has opened the door for a lot of people to start looking back on past stories that we heard about aliens. People are now looking back and taking past claims way more seriously and I think that's a good thing. I know that years ago when people would come forward saying that they saw aliens or they are that they got abducted, that that was really hard for people to wrap their minds around. It was really crazy. It was insane. Often people who would come forward, they would lose their livelihoods altogether. They would become the laughing stock of the community. The weirdo of the town, the talk of the town, everyone would gossip about them. Coming forward with an experience about seeing aliens or being abducted or something like that back in the day, it wasn't necessarily a good thing. It didn't really come with fame and fortune. Yeah, your name got out there, but people talked about you in a negative light. But now, now that we know our at the very least, now that we have government officials, high-ranking government officials, acknowledging that aliens and UFOs are real, now that we know that Congress and the Senate, they're conducting secret meetings about UFOs, now I think is the time that we look back at all of these people who had these claims in the past, and we look at them, how can I put this? We need to re-examine them and not be as skeptical as we, as we were back then. Because if you ask me, this openness about UFOs and aliens, the fact that Congress takes it seriously now, means that we should look back on past claims in a more serious light. Because in many ways, people's past claims that they were labeled as crazy over. Now it's starting to look way more believable, right? Like the story about Roswell. That maybe sounded crazy to you 20 years ago, but now that we have Congress members openly talking about UFOs, it doesn't seem as crazy. Well, I want to bring you to one story about a man who claimed that his cows were experimented upon by UFOs he claimed that he was abducted. He was a respected man in his community. But by the time it was all said and done with, he was left a shell of what he used to be. He became the laughing stock of the town. People mocked him. His own family mocked him. And even though he is dead and gone now, his son has many regrets. His son regrets thinking that his father was crazy. His son now believes that his father's claims may be true. And I want to go ahead and bring you right into this report. First, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. 
hit that thumbs up button. It goes a long way into helping this channel. Drop a comment below, share this video far and wide, and let's go ahead and dive right in, shall we? Was my alien abductee father telling the truth? Rancher became a homeless alcoholic after being mocked for claiming on national TV that aliens mutilated his cattle, then abducted him. Now his son says the Pentagon's UFO revelations concern him. More than four decades ago, Patrick McGuire became the laughing stock of his small Wyoming town when he appeared on national TV to claim that he'd been abducted by aliens. After being placed under hypnosis live on television, McGuire claimed he had been visited by star people from outer space who, who mutilated his cattle and then warned him <coughs> of an incoming apocalypse. McGuire's claims became the subject of mockery with his son, Daniel Rydall, writing this week that the father spiraled into alcoholism and despair after becoming obsessed by ideas of aliens and deep state cover-ups. But now, following months of blockbuster Pentagon hearings about alien visitors and renewed interest in UFO lawyer, or lore, Rydall admitted he never should have laughed at his dad. Is Sandy was being being Marks is driving around checking the cows. Come up on a, a cow that was dead. They cut the nose off, tongue was out, and the sex organs were gone. Oh, I see. One brother, one brother said must have been from a sex cult from the university. Out here messing around, I says, probably was. I said, we won't catch him yet. Okay, Pat, you're doing fine. I'd like to have you uh, now turn your attention to the, uh, the uh, evening that you and Mark were looking at that crap. You were looking through the scope. Mark, I says, Mark, I said, let's get the hell out of here. I said, that star's coming. I says, he said, that or my eyes are bad. He says, it's coming. It changed from an change from a pure white to an orange. I said, Mark, son of a, it pick it, it picking up a cow. I says, yeah, hear that cow? I don't see it's bawling. And it seems to be hovering there over the ridge. Right, hovering, picking up the cow. Can you see the cow? No. But you can hear the cow? Right, cow. Yeah, it's terrible. Terrible. Bawling. It's yeah. terrible. Worse than I ever heard a cow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard a few. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. And all of a sudden, uh, I just threw a valve or a switch. Everything stopped. The craft is still there. The cows wouldn't no, have no ball. No sound from the cow. No, it's like they should switch. Hmm. It's been weird in the back of my neck. Hair on the back of my neck was straight up. Hmm. And the next day, you said you drove over there? Right. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you find when you drive over? Well, we didn't go over there until 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. We waited till it was damn good daylight. Mm -hmm. We weren't taking a chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went and looked all over along the side of the hill. All we found was there was another cow in two miles, just a lone calf, born for its mom. I said that they took her. 
We never found her. Never did find her. McGuire's TV appearance came in 1981 on NBC's primetime show, That's Incredible, where he was placed under hypnosis by famed psychiatrist Dr. R. Leo Sprinkle. While under a trance, the farmer recounted in harrowing detail how he came face to face with star people, aliens, who he claims made threats on his life. He claimed the saga began after finding a mutilated cow on his farm, which had the nose off, tongues out, and sex organs gone. When a spaceship landed on his Boisler, Wyoming ranch, several other cows from his herd were also beamed into the sky. The year before, in an interview with ABC News, he also claimed to have been visited by aliens somewhere around 25 to 30 times. Rydell writes that a witness to some of the landings was quoted as seeing two or three spacecrafts land at separate times. We stayed and watched the sun come up and we saw two of them in daylight hovering in two separate places, they added. The televised claims came or the televised claims made him a pariah in his Wyoming town. But Rydell said his father's hypnotic confession were far from attention seeking. From the earliest points in my childhood, I was told that UFOs were nothing to make light of, he recalled. He says his father would warn him and his brothers that the star people could take them at any moment, a source of nightmares for the youngsters for years. This was coupled with harrowing descriptions of five foot hairless beings with eyes like colorless pools hovering by my bedside. Details that Rydell admits are similar to the stereotypical alien look as seen in the film and TV. Within just a few years of his fateful 15 minutes of fame, McGuire was destitute. He was a confused, sad, homeless man who had, by his own son's admission, become the town outcast. In one incident recounted by Rydell, McGuire's decline saw him caught rifling through a classmate's garbage. When the classmate revealed the embarrassing moment the next day, the school erupted with laughter including from Rydell himself. He said despite his newfound respect for his father's UFO inclinations, he and his brothers used to frequently mock their father when he would warn them about alien encounters. My brothers and I laughed when our father talked about the implants and their accompanying pain, he wrote. We laughed when he claimed that he could barely walk after what the star people did to him. We laughed when he said that he was suing the government for the land they took from him, for destroying his life, for destroying our lives. We laughed. The world laughed. Patrick McGuire passed away on May 14th, 2009, at the age of 67 from cancer. Writing 44 years after his father's TV appearance, Rydell said the world's renewed fascination with UFOs has left him full of regret. I am the one who now feels ashamed, he wrote. How should we address our past mockery and ridicule if it turns out that hidden in a desert base somewhere, there are indeed crafts, cadavers, and photographs of strange alien visitors? With even Barack Obama claiming that he has viewed UFO footage 
that he can't explain, many could argue that Maguire didn't deserve to be so publicly ridiculed. Greater numbers of whistleblowers are coming forward with eerily similar tales of non-human made aircrafts entering airspaces and leaving their witnesses as baffled as McGuire once was. Earlier this month, a top attorney involved in bringing UFO whistleblowers to Congress revealed that the U.S. military had recovered a craft that could defy the laws of nature. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about McGuire's story? I want to make it clear to you all that I'm not here to tell you that McGuire was telling the truth. I'm not here to expose McGuire as a liar. I'm simply here to state that now that all of this information is coming out, we need to start looking at these past cases in a more serious light. A lot of people always write off these UFO sightings as, oh, it's just someone trying to get famous. They just want attention. But I can tell you right now from the research I've done, most people who have come forward about their experiences with aliens or UFOs, it doesn't really end well for them. Most of them don't make a career out of it. In fact, I've seen a lot of people whose lives and careers were destroyed. McGuire is one of them. He even mentions how the government took his land from him, how they ruined his life after he came forward with this information about UFOs and aliens. Now, like I said, I'm not here to tell you or to convince you that McGuire is telling the truth, but knowing what we know now, we could look back on things from our past with a new sense of confidence that at the very least, it appears that UFOs are real. You could feel how you want to feel. You could think how you want to think or think how you want to think. Right now, I think there's a lot of evidence that shows that UFOs are real. Where they come from, I don't know. Who's controlling these crafts? I don't know. But I think that we're at a point where we can no longer deny the existence of UFOs. And now that we're at the point where government officials are openly talking about it, openly releasing videos and evidence about UFOs, I think it's time that we stop looking at people like McGuire as these crazy loonies who had these crazy stories in the past that no one would believe in reality. I think a lot of people, I'm not necessarily saying McGuire's claims are true, but I think a lot of these claims from the past, I think a lot of them are true. I think a lot of them are real. I've seen time and time again that the benefits definitely don't outweigh the risk of coming forward with what you've seen. And stories like this one are almost heartbreaking. Stories about a man who claimed that he saw aliens, claimed that he was abducted, and you name it. He was made the laughing stock of his town. To the point where his own kids, his own flesh and blood, his kids, would make fun of him. They thought he was crazy. And now those same kids are sitting here like, damn. I regret treating my father that way. I regret saying certain things to my father. I regret thinking certain things about my father because now, after the government was gaslighting people for decades, making people feel crazy for coming forward with these claims, now the government is coming forward with the same claims. Claims that are often even more outlandish than the claims that we've seen from people in the past who were written off as crazy. So while we're here in this moment in time, I think it is a great opportunity to look back on our past, to try to decipher who was telling the truth back then or not, because now the government is releasing evidence that could back up a lot of these people's claims. 
You know, when you have a guy saying, I saw UFOs, they're real. You're like, yeah, whatever. And then you have the government saying, hey, we have UFOs. They are real. It makes you go back and think about that one guy like, wait, maybe that guy was on onto something. Maybe that guy knew something I didn't know. Maybe that guy was telling the truth. And like I said, I don't know about this McGuire dude, but there are a lot of situations that have happened in the past, documented encounters with aliens and UFOs, spacecraft, and you name it, that I think that we, I think it's time that we take those reports way more seriously, way more seriously. If we don't, if we don't do it now, then when? And while we have the government basically being open or being more open about the existence of UFOs and aliens, I think we need to kind of poke them and prod them and try to get as much information out of them as possible while they're talking. Although, like I've said in past videos, I'm really not convinced in the motive behind why they've decided to start releasing all of this information. Let me know your thoughts about all of this, though, down in the comments. While you're down there, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I'll be talking to you all in the next video.